Hi, this is Apples, and I just want to show you what I've been working on. And today's video from the design team is our first ever combination of two people doing a video together. And I uh, wanted to show you what I'm working on and uh, what I've been using. These are the Tiny Tap transfer, water slide transfers from Tiny Pandora. There are the old love scenes. There are the Asian Geisha girls. There's the old west. And then the old signs and boxes and things like if you're into antique collecting like I was for years. These are very cool. And then there's some religious uh, pictures on here. The ones I really like are the black and white design ones because you can do such cool things with these and um, put them on anything and today I'm going to show you how to use them I guess that's the same one as that one but you can see there's all different types of designs there's little pictures there's anything that uh, you would actually want let me see if I can get that reflection off of there. And this is what I've done to them. I have been using my scraps and creating different things from scraps. This is a pendant, and I made the top bales just out of clay, rolled up, put a black edge on them, and this one, and then I put the black tiny tat, and I wanted a more solid looking tiny tat on there so it'd show up you know darker on the red for the black and this one already has deep shine on it this is the one I'm still working on this part has deep shine on it and this is a little bit larger one that will connect to there and I'm going to put a tiny tat on the bezel and I've also made earrings to match it and I'm putting a matching um, tiny tap on here as these are here's the ones I'm going to be using let me get them in view And I'm going to put them here and here, and the earring bottoms already has deep shine on them. And I'll put deep shine on the tops, and then I'll show you how I uh, am going to string them. So let's get the earrings out of the way. This is just a smaller version of a pendant than this one is. And this one I've already done the bezel part and a deep shine with another tiny tat on it but I want to show you the difference in what has got deep shine on it which is this one and no deep shine exact same clay same technique same design same everything deep shine no deep shine so that's why I love deep shine and it's great for round and curved surfaces okay now let's get to the tiny tap parts. You just cut them out. I prefer working with a little bowl of water. And I put them in. And I'll let them set for a couple of minutes. And I'll poke them down to make sure they get in the water. I find working with them in the water uh, is a little bit better than uh, trying to spritz them with a water bottle. I find they work better. And I use a really small pair of tweezers. And I'm going to, when they're ready, <clears throat> you'll know it. They'll if you leave them in there long enough. The design part comes right off of the white cardboard backing 
and you just pull it right up. And I hold the edge of it with my tweezers. I actually add a drop of water on where I'm going to put it so I can slide it easily and get it straight. And I lay it on there. And I push it down a little bit to get some of the extra water out. And then I'll take a little uh, paper towel or baby wipe and just blot very easily so you don't move the tiny tattoo water slide. And that's all there is to it. So let's get the, t I'm going to put two on this one. And let's go back and see where we are. Let me take that piece of cardboard out from the first one. If it doesn't automatically come off, just slide it right off. Put my drop of water on my piece here and get the bowl out of the way. And I want to make sure that I've got this going in the right direction. That was my tiny tap in the right direction. And I can slide it around until it's where I want it. I think I want it up a little bit further. And until I blot it off, it's going to stay on there. Let's pick this one out. See, it just slides right off. And I find using the really fine tweezers a lot easier than regular sized tweezers to use. It just doesn't grab the uh, water slide so much and uh, tear it. These can tear or crack. Okay. So I've got those on there. I've got the one on the earring top. These, I'm going to put deep shine on them, put them in my UV light. But while I'm doing that, Tracy Jones, which is a design team member, is going to show you how to use deep shine. Okay, so what I've got here is a few pieces that I can show you that you can apply the deep shine to. First of all, with your brushes, whenever you've used them, wrap them up, put them to bed, I call it, in some tin foil and keep them out of, obviously, the UV light. So don't put them on a windowsill if the sunshine blares in there because that won't do any good. Um, I haven't done anything other than that with these. I literally just pop them in here Put the end over like so and i've just got a little cupboard that i put my uv resin into just so it's out the sunshine if you want to clean your brush or you feel that it's due a clean a good dish soap what i do use is there's some a product which you it's like a facial wash wash and you can get it from like body shop i'm sure that's a very you know you can get a similar thing it's more like it's almost got like a an antibacterial type feel to it i suppose um, that's always good to wash it out but make sure your brushes are completely dry before you use them again so on to actually applying you can apply this onto any surface and as you can see this has obviously got a curved edge being able to brush something onto that and give it that sort of shine is absolutely brilliant to me um, and it is so immediate it means that you you know you if you someone that doesn't particularly like sanding too much then maybe you can give your piece the first sort of coat of sand and if you want to depending on what it is but the the dv uh, deep shine will absolutely gloss that up so yeah lovely you can also apply it on pieces that have had a surface treatment like this has got mica powder 
believe these were pan pastels that I put on here. So they do tend to sit on in the surface a little bit better. Sort of they are made for polymer clay. Um, but, you know, if you wanted to say, like, maybe turn that into something that people would wear, like a pendant, then it'd probably pay to put some kind of coating on it. But I'll show you how I coat that. A completely flat surface. Now, you can use the doming resin for this if you want to. That's entirely up to you. But what I like is you, you can just apply one coat and that's all you need. Um, if you want to apply more, that's fine. You may find that you need to just give it a very slight sand or a little rub off when, after the first coat. Just sometimes it feels as if you've got maybe little air bubbles have popped or it's it just got a slightly sort of gritty feel to it. Just sand it down. Just give it a good clean off again and put another coat on. Um, it does take a little bit of working out with the deep shine, but it really is a brush on UV resin and that's it. I don't know of any other brush on UV resin. Um, you can also get the Lisa Pavelka. That's brilliant. And you can, you know, use a deep shine around the edges on here. And if you wanted that doming look, then you could put that in the middle. Again, what's great is when you've got beads, you know, anything that you've got an edge to that is curved in any way. This is going to work absolutely brilliantly. So let's have a little play. First of all, I would always recommend with any piece, just give it a little bit of a wipe off. Obviously not something that's got a surface treatment, but just a little bit of a wipe off with just a little bit of alcohol and some tissue. And just, just takes off any residue, fingerprints, anything like that. And it just enables it to help the deep shine to sort of adhere to it. Let that sit that for a minute, obviously let it, the alcohol dry and I'll do the same with the bead. I will only coat these sides. I won't do the top and bottom of it until I've completely done the other parts. And it's just really making sure that you've not got anything stuck on there or in dust or anything like that. Put that to one side. Obviously, like I say, I can't actually do that piece, but I'm just going to show you how much you need because that's something else which I think is absolutely fantastic. This little bottle will go a very long way. You just need to put a very small amount in there and that's probably a bit much for one item. Well it's definitely a bit much for one item. Just take the little residue off the top. And like I say always keep this well out in the sunshine. Uh, out of the sunshine, not in the sunshine, sorry. Um, the last thing you want is to completely cure the whole bottle. So keep that. And then this piece here, I'm quite literally just going to very, very small amount on the end of my brush. In fact, I'm going to take some of that off. And I'm just going to start working it into this piece and it doesn't take very much at all. I just want it to seal it more than anything. It's not even for, um, I don't need to put doming resin on it. I could do, but I don't want to on this. I just want to be able to seal that mica powder and that's going to keep this piece good for a very long time to come. I've had pieces that I've done for two, three years and you wouldn't even, you'd think I'd done them yesterday. Um, and it's not, I'm not being very, I'm not heavy handed with this brush. It's always very hard to tell when you watch a video, especially something like that, because you can't tell what sort of pressure they're using. I really am not using very much pressure at all. I am just using this to apply it. Um, I don't want to have brush strokes, which I don't think I will. And I'm just going to make sure that every piece, like I say, you can put two coats on, but that really has used practically nothing. And that was sealed that, well, for a long time to come. So I'm going to put that in my UV lamp and I'll, it, it's going to take two or three minutes. If you really want to put another coat on afterwards, that's no problem. But if you've just got one thing, you just want to make sure that you've sealed that mica powder in, then just stick that straight underneath the UV lamp and that will be done in a matter of minutes. 
Now these should be dry, so I'm going to do exactly the same with this one. And it really is about applying just a very, very small amount at a time and just letting the brush slowly take the UV resin on. You can use your fingers. Not everyone's going to want to do that. Obviously, if you do, make sure you wash them thoroughly afterwards. But if you find that you want to smooth something off and you find your fingers are the only things you can do it with, then that's fine. Now I'm just going to put one very small coat and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure that I let that sit just for a minute or so just to make sure that I'm not getting any uh, little bits pulling away making sure that it's uh but I'm not going to worry if I do because if I do I will just sand this back and I don't mean sand it back by taking off all the resin just give it a sand down again clean it with some alcohol and then just put some more resin on don't give up don't throw a piece away just because you think oh no that's absolutely looks trash now because it's got all these bits pulling back and it looks as if it's full of grit no it will work you just need to be patient with it just need to lay it on there and I'm just making sure that I'm just gonna really get a nice finish probably shouldn't keep going back and forth like this but I'm I'm what they call a fettler. I can't leave things alone. <laughs> so um, I'm just going to see what that does. And I'm quite happy that that's going to be fine. So that's going under the lamp too. And then with our little bead here, what I will probably do with this is just do two sides. So as I can easily then just lay it into the UV lamp. And I haven't got to worry about it's sticking so again it really is just a very small amount I mean I you wouldn't even think I've used any of that UV resin that's in that little top there and this is just giving it a nice coat and that's all I'm going to do with that one and I would imagine that this is probably pretty much done maybe give that another minute but as soon as you've finished, anything you've got left, take your bottle, scoop it out, put it straight back in. And that's all you need to do. So just scoop it out and scoop it back in. So you really are hardly using anything at all of this uh, deep shine. Brushes, these are from Tiny Pandora as well absolutely lovely brushes so there we go and like I say I keep mine in a cupboard just to be 100% sure that the sun can't get to it um, and then I wrap this up straight away and that's all there is to it so if you're not sure have a go have a practice try some pieces first of all try try some scrap pieces but as you can see, that's given that a lovely, lovely shine. Do I need to put another coat on? I don't think so. I'm quite happy with that. And I may use that to go on a book cover or something like that. So, yeah, I'm just really pleased with how all of these come out. Um, I'll show you the bead. It's nearly dry. You can always tell when you tap it. So, again, you've got an immediate shine there for very, very little time. So... Have some fun and post your pictures. Thank you. Okay, I have everything with deep shine on it and assembled except for an air ring. I want to talk to you about jump rings. I see a lot of questions of what size jump ring do you use, do you use especially on your earrings well you use whatever size is needed you can see here I have a hole and a lip on there that I'm gonna have to put a jump ring through and I have another hole here and you put those two together 
and I either need a gigantic oval jump ring, which I don't have, or you need to do several. I have this pack of a gunmetal type collar, which I'm using because I didn't want bright silver or gold with these. And here's the sizes. This is the largest one, and they go down in size. And yes, depending on what I was doing, I've used every one of these. Let me show you how to use a jump ring. And I'm going to use this large one so you can see it. There's a thing called a jump ring ring. And you can put it on your finger and not have to use two sets of pliers. There's different size slots in it to hold your jump ring. And when you open a jump ring, you open one side towards you and one side away from you. Do not pull it out this way. It's, it's a twist front and back. So I need to put this large jump ring in my hole on my earring. And if I have enough room, I love using the rings because it frees up a hand. But when you shut your jump ring, shut it back the exact same way. Take it where the ends meet over a little bit. Make them... See, how can I explain this? Take it a little bit further than them matching up. And bring it back to where they meet end to end and you will hear a little click. You actually hear the click. You want your jump rings to be end to end, not one over top of the other or separation because they'll come undone. With this being my largest jump ring, I'm going to open it back up. Let me use another set of pliers so you can see it done with two sets of pliers. I pull one set towards me and one set away from me. Okay, I have my jump ring opened up. We'll put my top on there. Grab the other side again, front to back, let them pass, and then you'll hear your click. Okay, on the top part, I don't need this one. On the top part, I have a couple of choices I can use here. So when I did this one, I used this size. Because I'm going to hook a jump ring to my ear wire, I put that size jump ring on there now, front to back. Pass it over a little bit. Listen for the click. If you have good quality jump rings, you'll hear the click. It's it's very faint, but you'll hear it. Okay, let's open this one. And I happen to have some black ear wires. Okay, let's shut it. There's my click. So you use the size jump ring that you need to get through both holes without it tearing up your polymer clay hole. So here's my two earrings. I put the top on the pendant on this one. All of this has got deep shine on it. And because I was using the gun metal, I added an extra jump ring in there because I needed it to begin with. Let me get this out of the way so you can see it. I needed it to begin with because of the space, but I think it looks okay with three jump rings there because they're gunmetal. Now, if they were gold, I'm not sure. This one is done a largest jump ring fit through both of those holes. Get my jump rings out of the way so I don't end up picking them up. And here is 
the large pendant that matches the earrings. And these are the beads that I put on it. The triangle ones I made with um, black clay and I textured the sheet of black clay. Used my really tiny tri uh, diamond shape cutter. Cut out two. Baked. I already had them baked because I was going to use them on a different project. But I baked them. Got them out. Put um, bacon bond and a really thin piece of clay in the center here. Put an eye pin that I bent in the middle and straightened it back up and put it in there and baked them again. So that's my connection with those. And this is a pretty long necklace because it was a big pendant and I thought it deserved that. At the end I ended up just stringing some beads that match because I thought it would be more comfortable on the back of the neck than it would be just to have the chain. And my chain's thin, so I used Itsy Bitsy Jump Rings in here, right here, to connect it with my diamond-shaped beads. And I'll take a picture of this hanging up on a... Um, a uh, display thing in a little bit and post it in here so thank you all for watching this has been fun I hope you enjoyed Tracy's segment of the tutorial today let us know what you think of combining two tutorials together for you and let us know what uh, you'd like to see so you all have a great time thanks so much for watching blessings <laughs>